Welcome again. Did you know that Jesus clearly makes a case against natural human pride? Oh, yes, he does. We're reading from Luke chapter 14, verses 7 through 11. Let's get at it. He spoke a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they, how they chose the best seats and said to them, No, I just want to interject here. These are the words of the Lord. The words of the Lord, the words in red. When you are invited by anyone to a wedding feast, don't sit in the best seat. Since perhaps someone more honorable than you might be invited by him, and he who invited both of you would come and tell you, make room for this person, then you would begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that he who invited you comes, when he who invited you comes, he may tell you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For, ev for everyone, everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. This is a vital, vital, vital point in all throughout all of Scripture. We can go through uh, story after story after story, command after command after command, precept after precept after precept, and how God strikes down the, pr the proud and raises up the humble. We got the story of Naaman, Naaman who was a proud man who almost missed his blessing because he had to basically bathe in a very in a dirty what he called a dirty river and he had more much more beautiful rivers in his country whoa you know you go back to where you're from your city your country oh it's be much better there but you you go to you go to a foreign country and you go to see a prophet well you go to the prophet's house and the prophet even though you are one of the highest ranking members of that country, you might be like next to the king, one of the king's right hand men. Yet that prophet doesn't even come to the door to greet you. That's what happened with with Naaman. You know the story of Naaman, and we'll get to it. But I just want to briefly just touch on this. He went to the he went to the door to get a healing from the prophet of God. The prophet didn't even as so much get up out of his seat to say hello. He just went and he told the prophet told another man, I'll oh, just tell him to go bathe and go dip in the in the uh, Jordan River seven times. And Naaman was furiously angry. See, pride causes anger, especially when it when when you don't get your way, when you don't get what you expect. You see, this Naaman expected the prophet to come out and and greet him and give him the honor that's uh, that's due to him. And and you know, I'm sure the you know Naaman was there with this with his secret service. Prophet didn't even bother coming to the door, let alone saying hello and, and giving him a proper, so-called proper greeting. He just said, "Go, just tell that, uh, tell him, uh, just go uh, dip himself seven times in the Jordan." We can talk about Nebuchadnezzar as well, okay? But back to Naaman here. Naaman went to the Jordan, and you know he was, you know he was, he was angry. He said, I thought the prophet of God would come out and, and wave his hand over me and heal me. And, you know, and uh, and uh, why should I why should I bathe in this river? This river is not good. This is a dingy, uh, you know, dirty river here. Well, I got we got much more beautiful, cleaner, much better posh rivers in our country. Why should we why should we why should I dip here seven times? Besides, I'm full of leprosy. I don't want to show everybody my leprosy. That's kind of very humiliating. But the people who were with him, especially the, his servants, said, well, if the prophet would have told you to do some great and mighty thing, wouldn't have you have done it? Bingo. Wow. Good point. Because Naaman was a guy who had an issue with pride. He had an issue with arrogance. He had a, a natural human pride about him. You know, if, if, if the prophet of God said, go climb this high mountain, then he could, you know, the Naaman could go and I am climbing the highest mountain and I'm, look at what I'm doing. Look at what I have done. My, look at the great feats that I have accomplished. 
So the servant said, you do the great things. Why, why not do just this little thing? And so Naaman was humbled. He humbled himself, dipped himself, you know, showed everybody basically how much leprosy and how ugly he really was, but taken off enough clothes to bathe and in front of them all or in front of at least some, I, I would suppose. And, and, uh, and, and dipping seven, t seven times in the Jordan River, in this river that he said is not, a re not even a really good river. But he was healed. He humbled himself and was healed. Look at Nebuchadnezzar, who one day he goes out in his palace and he says, look at all the stuff that, that, I, that my hands have done. Look at, look at all the great works that I've done. And God, in, his, in Nebuchadnezzar's pride, God struck him down. He became like an animal. Uh, it says he became an animal for a long time. And then finally, after he came to his senses and humbled himself again and acknowledged that heaven reigns, that God reigns, then God raised him back up again. We got lots of stories of this. I can go on and on and on. But it says over and over in the scripture that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And the word opposes there is a very strong word in the original. It is signifying God who is setting himself up in battle formation against a certain individual or a certain group of people. It says God opposes, sets himself up in battle formation against the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. How many proud people claim God's grace but are not humble? It doesn't work that way. You got to be humble first and then you get God's grace. So, Jesus talked here. He taught about humility, one of the great things that is, you know, that that's required of us in scripture. Like as I, you know, it says in Micah, what is it what is what do you, O God, require of men? You know, to love justice, to do right, to do good, to love mercy, and to walk humbly, not pride proudfully, but humbly with your God. As you go away, as you go your way, may God grant you a spirit of humility so you can make so you can experience the fullness of God's kingdom in your life. Thanks again.